two years after emergency medical teams responded to the 2015 Nepal earthquake, many of the 22,000 people injured during the disaster are still rebuilding their lives. For some, recovery will continue for many years to come. After disasters, emergency medical teams save lives by providing trauma care and surgery. Now, more teams are realizing the importance of integrating rehabilitation professionals in their initial responses to give those they treat the best outcomes possible. This was the first time we embedded uh, rehabilitation experts and thinking about rehabilitation needs uh, in the first week inside the emergency medical team coordination cell. And it became very clear within the first few days of the response that there was an overwhelming trauma need but also the numbers of rehabilitation cases or cases that were so badly injured that they would require long-term rehabilitation. Clearly far higher than the local needs could manage and that many of the teams who had arrived hadn't thought about rehabilitation in their management system or, or how they could possibly help. We really see surgical care and trauma care as only the first step on a long road for a patient. And rehabilitation is a big part of that journey and the earlier we can think about it, uh, the better it is for the patient. We had a good you know, learning from the other disasters like from the Haiti that you know, uh, we have to have a you know, good plan for emergency response, uh, treatment, and at the same time, you know, rehabilitation. For Nirmala and Kembro from Kathmandu, it was a tough path to recovery. Each of them had a leg amputated due to injuries sustained in the earthquake. Kendo and Nirmala are two girls, they are children. So we saw them on the second day of earthquake in National Trauma Center and where there was no rehabilitation service. So um, after the amputations, the rehabilitations was so important for them because our long-term aim for them was to make them stand and walk on the prosthesis. Now they are going to the schools, now they are playing. They are enjoying their right as a human. Earlier responses by emergency medical teams after the Nepal earthquake saved lives. With introduction of rehabilitation at the beginning of the response, people with impairments were able to achieve better mobility and quality of life. So many young people were injured in the earthquake. For example, a patient uh, uh, he's a young guy, around 20 years old, uh, Kesh Bahadur Guru. He used to work as a trekking guide. While going on the rescue in his uh, very remote area, he, his truck fell off the cliff and uh, he had a spinal cord injury. And after the hospitalization, I came here for the rehabilitations because at the time I don't have any sensation. And at the time, I have too much infections and so many problems. So, for that management, I came here for the rehabilitation since. Without the rehabilitations, the people who, who got in spinal cord injury, they will not live longer. There were a lot of lessons that we learned from Nepal that will really help us be more effective in the next sudden onset disaster. With rehabilitation, we show that you can reduce the lengths of stay for patients in the acute care environment because we were able to get them up, get them walking, and get them back into their communities as soon as possible. WHO is working to strengthen the integration of rehabilitation into future emergency responses by including standards for rehabilitation in the verification of teams. The standards mean that teams can now provide better quality rehabilitation from much earlier on in the response. The standards for rehabilitation in emergencies mean that teams must now deploy with at least one rehabilitation professional per 20 beds. They must bring certain equipment and consumables with them that are important for rehabilitation. And that when they're going to be there for an extended duration, they allocate a specific space where rehabilitation can be provided to patients. For some patients who have gone through a life-changing injury, rehabilitation can help take their life in a new and positive direction. After completing my uh, rehab, the SIRC, they gave me a job here as a counsellor. Then now I motivate to other 
wheelchair users. Kesvar and Nirmila and Kembro's stories had positive outcomes because of the care they received, with strong rehabilitation efforts integrated into future responses, we can give many more people the happy ending they deserve. We really need every MT to, to feel it's part of their role to, to start the rehabilitation process the moment they start trauma care. It's important for EMTs to realise that rehabilitation needs to begin with them, but that it will also continue long beyond when they leave. Having a rehab provider within their team allows the patients to get the earliest access to care, but also to link them on to the appropriate follow-up services. By achieving the World Health Organization standards, emergency medical teams can ensure future responses will see better quality care and more people leading productive lives.